Solve. You could solve it in many ways, but uh, one way of solving it is just to write psi of x is equal to e to some f of x. And try to figure out what f of x is. All right, so let's try it. Um, first of all, of course, we can get rid of the i's here. I and I factor out. Furthermore, we can get rid of the minus sign. Both of them have minus signs. And now what's the derivative of psi of x? To calculate the derivative of psi of x, we simply differentiate and we find that, let's call it psi prime, which means the derivative, is equal to f prime, that's the derivative of f, times e to the f of x. To differentiate an exponential, you just differentiate the thing that the, in the argument of the exponential here and multiply again by f of x, e to the f of, e to the f of x. Okay, that's psi prime, that's this here, and then we add to that we want to add to that plus omega x psi of x, which means we're going to add to this plus omega x e to the f of x. Now you see what Michael was saying, that the e to the f of x factors out. We can get rid of it. That's where the trick, that's why the trick was done in the first place. Let's get rid of all of this here. And our equation is just df dx plus omega x equals zero. That's it. Equals zero. The f dx came from here, plus omega x, they both multiplied psi, so we got rid of psi, and that's our equation. Alright, this is really easy to solve. A function whose derivative is a linear thing, what kind of function is that? A quadratic thing. So the solution is quite clearly going to be proportional to x squared. In fact, it's going to be f of x is equal to one half omega x squared plus a constant. Let's let's put the constant in there. Let's put the constant in there, and that's all. Hmm? Minus, minus, minus. Thank you. Minus one half omega x squared. That tells us that psi of x is equal to e to the minus one half omega x squared. What about the constant? Well, we can add it in, but that just puts a numerical constant in front of the exponential. Since I haven't bothered worrying too much about normalizing it, I'm not going to bother with the constant. Numerical constant out in front is there. Uh, it's got an omega, got a one over square root of omega in it, but it's uh, not terribly interesting for our purposes. This is psi naught of x, and notice that it goes to zero very, very fast with x, e to the minus x squared. It's a Gaussian. It's a bell-shaped curve that goes to zero as e to the minus one half omega x squared and is very, very square integrable. If we square it and integrate it, it's extremely convergent. And so we've succeeded in finding, now we can go back and check that the original Schrodinger equation is satisfied. In other words, we could plug this wave function into the Schrodinger Hamiltonian up above 
and calculate what the energy eigenvalue is. But we already know what it is. It's going to be omega times one half. We know that from all the algebraic tricks over here. So if we stuck this function back into the Schrodinger, into this Schrodinger equation, we would discover that E is equal to one half, just by putting it in, plugging it in, and doing it. So we know the ground state wave function. We have one eigenvector of the energy. We see what its physical properties are. It's concentrated near the origin. It's very smooth because the Gaussian function is very smooth. It's concentrated near the origin. It does what you might expect a ground state wave function of a harmonic oscillator to do. It just sits at the origin. It sits very close to the origin, or at least by close now I mean that it's concentrated near the origin. And, um, yeah, it's the ground state. What about the first excited state? I'll do the first excited state for you. It's, very, it, it's almost trivial. And then you can go home and have a lot of fun calculating the next 50 states. It's uh, sort of mindless um, fun. But how do you do it? <laughs> it's how you do it is more interesting than what you get. Well, oh, they're both interesting. But you do it by saying, look, I know what the first excited state is abstractly. Abstractly, the first excited state is equal to A plus times the ground state. I know what the ground state is, and I know what A plus is. So let's just apply A plus to the ground state. Here's the ground state. A plus is P plus I omega X. And that will tell us what the first excited state is. All right, so in terms of wave functions, psi 1 of x is equal or proportional to p plus i omega x. Now, p is minus i d by dx plus i omega x. on e to the minus one-half omega x squared. So all we have to do now is to calculate a derivative. But you know, I already did this. I already did this. We did it with the opposite sign here. We did it with a minus to get zero. If I do it with the opposite sign, and get zero, that means if I do it with the sign here, I'm just going to get twice the answer that I would get go back. I did this operation on here and got zero. That's the way I solved the equation. 